David Bushnell is known as the inventor of sea mines. During the American Revolutionary War in 1777, he set adrift what were known as floating explosive torpedoes in the Delaware River, hoping to take a British ship as a casualty. It took out a small boat floating next to the HMS Cerberus, a British frigate, killing four sailors. These would be the first casualty of sea mines in naval history. In the years after, mines became seen as devilish and unchivalrous in combat. For their early lives, sea mines were used sparingly, and it wasn't until the American Civil War that the world saw the first large-scale use of these explosive torpedoes. The Confederate Navy was known to be inferior to the Federal Navy during the war, so to compensate, they turned to massive mining efforts. They covered their coastline with various types of mines and inflicted heavy losses on the Federal Navy. During the Battle of Mobile Bay, mines sank a total of 27 Federal vessels. During World War I, naval mines became a primary weapon against the deadly and feared German U-boats. The Allies laid what is known as the North Sea Barrage, a minefield that extended 250 miles from Scotland to Norway in 1918. In five months, American and British forces were able to plant 72,000 mines. The war was actually ended before the minefield was completed, but during this short time in service, it sank six submarines and damaged even more Axis vessels. Following the First World War and the subsequent period of peace, mines were forgotten about as effective weapons and not much development was performed in the industry. That is, until World War II. With the advancement of submarine and airplane technology, both of these crafts were developed to effectively lay sea mines. These mines had now evolved past the early stages of mine design that functioned only on contact, to be what are called influence mines. These mines were now able to actuate based on magnetic, acoustic, or pressure changes in the water due to enemy ships. Mines became a highly effective and strategic weapon in World War II. One example of such was Operation Starvation. The United States carried out a massive mine-laying operation near the end of the war in the Pacific that involved laying 12,000 mines blocking Japanese shipping routes. In total, the U.S. sank 650 Japanese ships and practically halted their shipping activities. Due to mines' effectiveness as not only an active weapon, but as a psychological deterrent, nearly all Japanese ships were forced to stay in port or heavily diverted into enemy waters. After World War II, mines fell again into the background of warfare as the world tried to scale back their militaries. Superpowers assumed that naval mines wouldn't be useful with the state of advanced warfare and nuclear bombs, but they were soon proven wrong. During the Korean War, the Korean Navy only had 45 vessels, a tiny navy compared to the U.S.'s 250-ship invading fleet. Yet, nearly the entire U.S. fleet was held up for a week due to 3,000 mines laid in the North Korean waters. This got the attention of the U.S.'s Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Forrest Sherman, and the U.S. started heavily investing into mine countermeasures and advancing mining technology. Another important note is that this re-interest in mines wasn't just due to the week-long holdup, but also that 70% of U.S. naval losses were directly the result of enemy mine warfare in the Korean War. Only 2% of the U.S. naval service were minesweeping personnel, demonstrating a clear flaw in U.S. naval strategy. The U.S. developed the Destructor class of mines in 1967. These mines contained highly sophisticated solid-state firing mechanisms that were inserted into the fuse wells of simple general-purpose bombs. This class of mines stayed in operation until the Vietnam War era, where a new family of quick-strike mines were developed. These mines were heavily sophisticated and developed for specific strategic uses. They were also incredibly cheap compared to other weapons, making them perfect for defensive action. The U.S. continued to build up their mine warfare forces in all types, involving sea and air units, ordnance disposal detachments, reconnaissance units, and minesweeping ships. To this day, naval mine operations and the skills of the community therein remain the unsung backbone of U.S. naval defensive operations across the world.